Of all the ZX Spectrum's vast library of games, the one which sticks in my mind the most is Dynamite Dan. Released in 1985 by Mirasoft Limited and developed by Rod Bokit, Dynamite Dan is an unmistakably British game. To that end, it's weird. Very weird. It's also unmistakably Spectrum, with splashes of highly contrasting colours and our beer belly yielding protagonist, Dan. Its developer was also a musician by day, which you can tell as the game is littered with little ditties pouring from the 48Ks on board Beeper. Originally priced at £6.95, it was later released as a budget title for £1.99, which happened to fall into my possession sometime in the late 1980s, and it received a crash smash with a 94% review placing it as a must-have Spectrum title. With their pre-production copy, Crash speculated that the storyline was to rescue your girlfriend, who can be found pacing up and down in the vault, protected by the hovering evil Dr. Blitzen. However, that is merely a diversion and touching her will seal your demise. The actual aim is to locate eight sticks of dynamite placed around the sprawling and bewildering map, blow the safe door and then collect the top secret documents stored on a handy shelf. You can then make your way back to your airship and escape, thwarting our villain's plans to create a deadly death ray. The map itself is a large wraparound building, forming the Doctor's evil hideout, filled with a variety of critters, beasts and snails, all centred around a central elevator. Walking into a creature or falling into the sea without first finding an oxygen tank will take a life, but you can also be zapped by a laser beam or run out of energy by not collecting enough food. There are also trampolines, tight ropes, teleports and a variety of household objects to deal with on your quest as you work out cunning ways of retrieving the hard to reach dynamite sticks. Lose all your lives and you'll face your ultimate fate by the hand of Dr Blitzen and his completed death ray. However, finish the ferociously difficult task of escaping and you'll be gifted with a code to unscramble and the opportunity to phone Mirasoft and win a Mirasoft blimp, although you can't keep it. In fact, the first person to phone just won a flight in a Goodyear blimp. Whether anyone collected this prize seems unknown, but if they did, they damn well deserved it. The code itself was unscrambled by reversing the alphabet, so A would equal Z, B would equal Y, and so on. Once you do this, the message reads, Mirasoft rules OK. This was a prize my child self was never going to win, especially as I got the game well after its release date. However, the colourful graphics, quirky charm and responsive controls kept me and my brother coming back to this game time and time again, even if we could only collect four dynamites before dying. A sequel emerged in 1986 with many more rooms, and it's well worth playing once you've completed the first game. If you can't, then just pretend you have and give it a go anyway.